Okay, so in this video we are now looking at uh, reversing what we've been doing so far. So we've built up a whole lot of algebraic skills that enable us to solve cubic equations so that we could sketch cubic graphs. So we, we now can be given the equation and sketch the graph. What we want to be able to do here is, if we have the graph, work out what the equation is. Um, so obviously we need to sort of identify a good starting point for finding the equation of our particular um, cubic depending on the information that we've got. So if it's, a, if it's going to be a cubic of this shape, you know the equation can be, is going to be of that form. Okay, so that would be the starting point. It's going to be part of that family of cubics. Okay? Um, and so you then just, if you know the turning point, you can immediately put in H and K and then you can use another point to sub it in to find the value of A. If you've got the x-intercepts, then you're going to start from the factorised form. Okay? Obviously, if you've got three separate x-intercepts at B, C and D, the factors are going to be x minus B, x minus C and x minus D. But then again, you need to think about some kind of dilation because there's infinitely many cubics that have these three x-intercepts. Okay? So you need to know which one by subbing in a point and finding A. And then finally, if you don't have the x-intercepts or the point of inflection, then you're just going to start with the most general expanded out form of a cubic and sub in your four points, create four simultaneous equations with four unknowns, and in that, that case you'll have your CAS, use your CAS to solve those equations. We'll review again, we looked at it in the um, quadratics chapter, but we'll again look at how we can do that this process really efficiently with our CAS. Okay, let's just work through some examples. So find the equation of the graph pictured. So in this instance, I've got x-intercepts, and so I'm going to start with those. So I know if there's an x-intercept when x equals negative 2, the factor must be x plus 2, okay? And the graph's cutting through at that point, so it's just going to be a power of 1, so I wouldn't need to write any power. I know if there's an x-intercept at 5, x equals 5, therefore, is the solution. That means x minus 5 must be the factor. And the fact that we've got a turning point happening there means that it must be a squared factor. So I know my equation is going to have x plus 2 times x minus 5 all squared. And I now need to think about the particular dilation that's going to mean that it goes through this particular point up here. Because as I said, there's infinitely many other cubics that also have an x a cutting x-intercept here and a touching x-intercept here. Okay, So we need to consider the dilation, so we work out um, the specific cubic that matches this one. So we're going to substitute the point 0, 150, which means when x equals 0, y is equal to 150. Alright, so 150 equals a times 2 times negative 5 squared is positive 25. So it's 150 equals 50a, and so a has to be it makes sense that A is a positive value because we can see here that our cubic is going up as we go from left to right, and so we would expect positive x cubed when we expand it out. And so therefore, putting everything back together, our equation is um, 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 5 squared. Okay, example 2. This time we've got a cubic with a point of inflection, so we know it is going to be we can write it in this turning point form. Remember, it's a cubic, so it'll be cubed, not squared. That's a common error that students make. So the point of inflection at 1, 4 means that our equation is a times x minus 1, so that's the 1 to the right, cubed, and plus 4, up by 4. And so then we can just use our y-intercept to find the value of a. So we're going to sub the point 0, 6 which means y equals 6 when x equals 0. Okay, let's take away 4 from both sides. Negative 1 cubed is still negative 1, and so a is going to be negative 2. And so therefore the equation is negative 2 times x minus 1 cubed plus 4. It makes sense that a turned out to be negative because we can see the shape is going down as we go from left to right. Okay, finally, if we've just got four random points, a cubic of the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d passes through the points negative 330, negative 1, 8, 1, 6, and 5, 266, find the values of a, b, and c, a, b, c, and d. 
Okay, both in our CAS and in writing out our solution on paper, making these four substitutions is much more efficient using function notation. So let's introduce some function notation. Let's let f of x be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And so that means if we want to sub in the point negative 330, that is f of negative 3, we let x equals negative 3 and the whole thing will equal 30. If we want to sub in the point negative 1, 8, we sub negative 1 in place of x and the whole function will be equal to 8. If we want to sub in the point 1, 6, we sub 1 in place of x and the whole function will equal 6. And if we want to sub the point 5, 266, f of 5 is subbing in x equals 5 and then that's going to equal 266. So much more efficient than actually trying to generate those um, four simultaneous equations by hand is to just make the four substitutions using function notation. You're going to have your CAS in these questions here. You're not expected to solve four simultaneous equations in four unknowns by hand in this course. Okay, so I essentially want to do the same thing with my CAS. I do need to write these things down here though. You can't just write an answer in the space. What have you done? You've subbed in the four um, points. You're now going to solve them simultaneously. You don't need to write solve simultaneously. If I've got four equations with four unknowns in them and I write down the answer with the four values, I know that I've solved them simultaneously. Okay, so again, we want to be able to make those substitutions really easily, which means using function notation. So we want to define that general form. So menu 1, 1 to define a function. I'm going to define it as f of x and it's going to be equal to, now we need to be careful about when we type ax cubed, it's a times x cubed, otherwise my CAS doesn't understand it correctly, it thinks I mean x cubed when I mean a times x cubed. So take some care with that, b times x squared plus, oh, sorry, c times x and plus d. Make sure none of those letters you've typed in there are bold. If they're bold, if, if F's bold, that's okay, you're going to override it. But if X is bold or A or B or C or D are, are bold, you've got things stored as A, B, C or D. Um, you're going to need to go to menu uh, 1, 4, clear A to Z before you do anything. If you're working in document mode, start a new document so you don't have all of those old definitions interfering with what you're trying to do. Okay, to find my general form, and then I'm going to want to generate my four simultaneous equations and solve them simultaneously. I can do all of that in one step. So let's set up the simultaneous equation solving template first. So menu, 3 for algebra, um, 7 for system of equations, and uh, 1 for solve system of equations. I'm going to have four equations here. And these equations, by the time I've substituted for x and y, they're going to have be in terms of a, b, c, and d. So that's what I'm solving for. It brings up my template. I type my four equations in here. And it's as simple as typing f of negative 3 equals 30. Because that will literally replace all the x's with negative 3's and make it equal to 30. That's my first equation. Okay? I don't need to actually do that by hand. I don't actually need to see what that equation looks like in full. Um, f of negative 1 equals 8, f of 1 equals 6, oh sorry, equals 6, 6, and f of 5 equals 266. Solve, alright, and so we get a equals 17 on 16, b equals 91 on 16, oh. C equals negative 33 on 16 and D equals 21 on 16. Okay, so we want to make sure we... Ah, the question said find the values of A, B, C and D. So we have find the values of A, B, C and D. We've answered that question. If the question was to find the rule for the equation, okay, then we would put those values actually into the equation. So it would be 17 on 16 X cubed uh, plus 91 on 16 X squared plus uh, minus 33 on 16 x plus 21 on 16. If I was giving the equation in this particular instance, given they've all got that common denominator of 16, I'd actually probably just factor that out. So then I could just write it as 17 x cubed plus 91 x squared minus 33 x plus 21. Okay. But in this instance, the question didn't ask you for that. It asked you for this. Okay. So making sure that you answer the question. All right, the little box here just goes through, again, that process of um, defining the function and solving the simultaneous equations to find the unknown coefficients. 
Alright, so the practice here, exercise 6H.